Aloha and how are you? It is so good to be back with you again today. I'm in great expectation. How many of you woke up this morning in great expectation of God doing something marvelous, something great? I'm in great expectation because at the very last minute, the Holy Spirit changed my scripture. I'm like, okay. You know, but you know, he is able, he is in me, his word is in me, amen. And so he knows exactly what you need to hear today. God, he, he is tremendous. I am so excited about hearing some of the marvelous things that the people are doing in loving kindness. Look, they don't have to just be a Christian for you to show love and kindness to. Show love and kindness to whomsoever is in need because that will draw them. That will draw them to the God that you serve. Isn't that amazing that the presence of God, the Spirit of God will draw individuals to Him by you exhibiting love and kindness. You are some of the only um, experience that they will ever have of God in this earth. So represent our Father and represent Him well. This is a day that we must represent Him so that they know that He is a God of more than enough. He is the all-sufficient one. He sees all. He knows all. Share with you what you have one to another. You know, our, our, our life system is based upon seeds that we sow. Are you sowing seeds in the earth? Whatever you sow will come back to you 100%. And I just want to let you know that it's seed time and harvest time. We will always with, be with us. How many of you are ready for a harvest in your life? You have no um, say so over the harvest. It will grow and overflow. And you'll wonder, oh my God, where did all of this come from? Well, it came from our Heavenly Father. Before I get into the Word, I want to share with you that Remnant Cafe, which is the name of our ministry, that we hold the first Saturday of every month, will be postponed for the next couple of months. And so, I just wanted to let you know because I spoke to someone and they said, hey, I, I, I'm coming. I said, well, first of all, we, we have a gathering of more than five or ten people, but we want everyone to be safe. And I also want to ask that you keep my husband in prayer. He needs the prayers of those that will believe God for healing. Amen. And I will share a little bit more about that. No, he doesn't have the virus. Okay. Um, but there are plenty of people out there that do who need your prayers. We truly believe that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I truly believe that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent taken by force. And this is a time that we need to become violent saints. This is not a time that we lay down and roll over like a little wet puppy dog. No, it's a time that we stand up and we fight. I know that I am a woman warrior. I am a virtuous woman. And when my husband found me, he found a good thing. But he found a warrior. He found a, one, a woman that will fight for her home, who will fight for her marriage, who will fight for the things of God. So I'm calling all the warriors, all the intercessors to, as you are praying for our nation, to add my husband in there as a period at the end of the sentence. Amen to pray for his health. God bless you. God is so good. Well, as I said in the beginning, I see Esther and Lisa on with me this morning. God bless you. Start a watch party. Tell somebody, let them know that we're on because God changed the scripture right at the last minute. And that's okay because that's what he does. And because I, I had my own plan. But he changed my plan. How many of you know that God will change your plan in this day and age? My God. And so what he gave to me to share with you is Psalm 47. 
And that is one of my favorite scriptures. I say it all the time. Every scripture I read is my favorite scripture. It really ministers to the heart, to my heart. And because he changed it and he knew I was coming on the air to share with you, he knew that this would minister to you today. And so Psalm 47, if you don't have your Bible, open up your Bible. Go get it and, and take some notes and let's, let's dive into this and see what the Spirit of the living God has for us. Amen. And it says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Woo! Let's clap our hands. Guess what? When you clap your hands, you are smashing the enemy. You are, you are smashing his head. You are smashing his thoughts. Let us clap our hands. It's a sign of rejoicing and celebration. You said, what do we have to celebrate? We have a lot to celebrate because no matter what's going on, we celebrate the word of God. We celebrate the presence of God. Satan has no rule over us. We have rule over uh, him. And we need to learn how to take dominion. Stand on his head. Amen. And so the scripture starts out. It says, all you, your, clap your hands, all you people. Are you a people? Are you a person? Clap your hands. I just slap the devil in the face. Slap the devil in the face right wherever you are. It may sound foolish, but that's okay. Um, one of my dear sisters in the Lord was going to do a meeting, learn how to war with your hands. And I was so looking forward to it. She postponed it. But I know that it is for an appointed time. I know that she is going to come forth because I truly believe that it was a right now word. Learn how to war with your hands. We just warred with our hands. Clapping our hands, we smash the devil's head. We, especially if he's all up in your face, that means he's too close. You need to put him under your feet and stomp on him. But some of you have allowed the enemy to get all up in your face, all up in your personal space, all up there where he doesn't need to belong, trying to get to your head. Put him under your feet and stomp on that ugly devil's head. Amen. And it says, I'm shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Let's shout to God with a voice of triumph, a voice of victory. Now, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Times are really hard. I don't have this and I don't. No, shout with a voice of triumph and say hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your mercy. I thank you. You are the all-sufficient one. You are the God that will provide everything that I need. You are the God that will never leave the righteous forsaken or your seed hungry or begging for bread. This is not a time for us to be hungry or begging for bread. My God, shout with a voice of triumph. Woo, my God. Shout with a voice of triumph, a voice of victory. Because we are victorious in him. We are victorious. Oh, my God. Shout with, to God with a voice of triumph. That's not, you know, God is not deaf. But a voice of triumph is a voice that's excited. Excited. Are you excited? Be excited. Be in great expectation about what God is going to do for you. You know, I ask that, that you intercede and pray for my husband. I'm shouting with a voice of victory. I see the victory at the end. Don't wait until the victory is over to shout. Shout now. Shout with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. We know that he is awesome. He is an awesome God. He is an amazing God. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond what we can even imagine. That's the kind of God that we serve. Don't allow the current situation to dictate your future. Don't let your finances, what you have or don't have, dictate your future. Let me tell you, God, if God had um, the, one of the disciples to go and get the coin out of a fish's mouth to pay a debt, my God, what will he do for you? 
not to pay a debt, but to make sure that your needs are provided, to make sure that you have food and, and water and, yes, toilet paper. My God, he is the God of toilet paper. He is the God of everything. He is the God of meat. He is the God of bread. Look, they struck the rock, and the rock brought forth water. This is the day that we are going to see creative miracles. Let me tell you, creative miracles. You're going to open up your cabinet. There may not have been anything there. And you're going to open up your cabinet again and food will appear. This is the day of creative miracles where things will begin to appear that weren't there before. My God, do you believe God? Do you trust God? I know I've seen the manifestation of miracles in my life, not just for myself, but for others as well. Where there was nothing, there was something. God has no respect to person. If he did it for the children of Israel, when he turned um, water into wine at the wedding feast, and he brought the best out for last, when most people would bring the best first. And as, as the party and the celebration continues, they would be so drunk, my God. They wouldn't know that they were drinking cheap wine. He said, no, he brought the best out for last, my God. God will bring his best. He's consistent. He, he always gives you his best. My God, he will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. You have enemies out there. The enemy is not flesh and blood. The enemies are spirits and principalities and wickedness and high places. Cast them down. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Get in your word. Find out what the promises of God are. And watch and see what he will do for you. My God. God is good. He is a great king over all the earth. He is the king of kings. He's the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords over all the earth, not some of the earth. We were praying for the seven continents. Let's not be selfish. Let's not just pray for me, myself, and I. Don't just pray for the United States. Pray for all seven continents because this we are in a war. And the war has already been won in reality, my God. But pray, release your prayers. What you don't do for one, God will do for you. God will have others praying for you. You remember that song, I'm not sure who wrote it. Somebody, somewhere is praying just for you. I know that to be a fact. I've had times of, of, of trouble or been in a situation and I found out later on that somebody clear across the United States were praying for me just at that exact time that I needed prayer. Let us sow seeds today. Let us sow seeds of favor. Let us sow seeds of, of, of prayer. Let us sow seeds of money. You're please, 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 if, if you are a believer and, and, and you go to church and you pay your tithes, don't forget to pay your tithes. Don't forget to pay your tithes. Oh, you so I'm only working part-time. God knows that. So if you were making a thousand every week and you're only making 500 a week, pay your tithes on the 500 and watch what God will do for you. He, he, gave, he gave the children of Israel manna from heaven. And manna from heaven is what is that? <laughs> what is that? Because there's going to be some what is that that's going to show up your front door. He turned, he hit the rock in the end, and water came out, so you will never go thirsty. My God. He is a miracle working God. He changes now. You know that. You know, I don't have to tell you that. I just feel like talking and sharing God's word. I just like a God knowing that I know his promises. I know you know that we serve a miracle working God, that he is able to do whatever his word says he will do because he is the king over all the earth and you know a king has the right to declare a thing my god he will subdue the people under us Woo! he will subdue them under us and the nations under our feet he will choose our inheritance for us we have an inheritance 
You want to know what your inheritance is? Get in the word of God. Go to the book of Deuteronomy and see how you're blessed going in and blessed coming out. You're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. That should be your confession. Begin to decree and declare the word of God. I am blessed. Shout with a voice of triumph how blessed you are. People say, oh, you're a little arrogant. Things are going on and you going around shouting, now I'm blessed. Yes, you are blessed. Shout it with a voice of triumph, a voice of victory. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. No matter where you are, you are blessed. There's a scripture that talks about learn how to obey and lot, learn how to abound. Learn how to praise God in little and learn how to praise him in much. My God. Woo! So he will choose our inheritance for us. The excellence of Jacob, who he loves. Isn't that Selah? Isn't that powerful? You know, I, I know, you know, I read this and, you know, all the word applies to you. If there's a prophecy that goes forth, you know, we heard some things are taught, some things are caught. Catch it! Catch it and embrace it. We read the other day in Revelation where it talks about make sure that you embrace the things that God has already given to you. He has already given this to us. I was going to read, thank you Lord God, I was going to read Psalm 23. That, you know, we all know that scripture. We, we've heard that, that scripture from from when we were little children. I, I, I just want to go to it. I don't want to misquote it. I sh should know it by heart. I made my grandchildren learn it. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? My God. And if he is your shepherd, he will lead and guide you. And you shall not want if he's your shepherd. To remind him of his word. Not that he doesn't know it. He just want to make sure that you know it. He wants you to shout it with a voice of triumph. He wants you to decree and declare the word of God. Declare the word of God and say, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Declare I shall not want. No matter what's going on. No matter what is going on in the year 2020. I shall not want. He makes me. Woo! Now, that, I don't know if you've, you've caught that, but it says here in Psalm 23, verse 2, it said, He makes me. He's not asking for your permission. He said, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, if you know anything about a sheep, a sheep will graze on dirt. Sheep cannot be, are sometimes not that intelligent. They will graze on dirt. They will eat in that same spot over and over and over again till there's nothing there. That's why he says, I will make you lie down in green pastures. I, he will lead me beside the still waters. You wonder why still waters, my God. Because the hair on sheep is so thick and so heavy that if he gets in raging water, he's going down. So he's going to lay you down beside still waters where the waters are not raging. We don't need as believers, as the sheep of God, we don't need to be around raging waters, my God. We need to be around still waters. You need to be around peace. The peace Peace, the shalom, shalom, that will destroy the chaos of the authority of the enemy. You need to be around peace. He says, he will restore my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll read you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He will not be made ashamed. And guess what? Hope will not make you ashamed. If you hope in God, if you hope in his word, if you hope in his promises, my God, hope will not make you ashamed. And he says, for his name's sake. His name's sake. Verse 4, Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
Go around declaring that word over your household, over your businesses, over your finances. I remember when I, I came under attack with cancer and the first time I got up out of the bed and walked around the nurse's station, I walked around declaring the word of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Holy Spirit was left here on earth. Call upon the Holy Spirit. There are many people who talk about, oh, I believe in the Holy Spirit. But do you call on the Holy Spirit? One of his assignments here on earth is to make you comfortable. He, one of his assignments here on earth is to comfort you. And there are many who need comforting in this time. So call upon the Holy Spirit. That's his assignment here on earth. Jesus left him. He said, I must go, but I leave another one who will comfort you. My God, who will teach you, lead you, and guide you. My God, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Verse 5, he prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. Anoint my head with oil and my cup overflow. I pray God. And I thank God that today your cup will overflow. Give out of the overflow. You drink from the saucer and give out of the overflow. My God, give out of the overflow. Your cups are running over. I decree and declare in your life, this is a time for miracles, miraculous miracles. I said it before and I'll say it again. Go in your house, close the door. Take communion and watch and see what God will do. Many miracles are performed before behind closed door. Allow God to perform miracles behind closed door. God is so good. Woo! Okay, well, I guess he did have another plan. Because he gave me that scripture, Psalm 47. But then he took us back to, to um, Psalm 23. So remember Psalm 47? Clap your hands! Let's give God some praise and let's give him some glory. Let's celebrate. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with a voice of triumph. My God, he is so good. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.